Hi, my name is Allison Hall. I'm the gallery director for Hagen Fine Art. And today, Karen Hewitt Hagen, our gallery owner, and I are here with Anastasia Bukhanlina and Antonin Pasmald. Thank you for joining us from your studio. Where is your studio in France? Uh, it is in Burgundy. How long have you been at this studio? Uh, we just got this house a year and a half ago, so not very long. Do y'all paint in the same physical studio or do you each have your own separate studio? Uh, I can say that uh, it depends on uh, time of the year. Uh, so there is a space in our house which is uh, more warm, we use during the winter. And there is a big space uh, across the yard, uh, which we use during the summer. But usually we don't paint at the same space. Antonin, he does a lot of uh, landscapes and he paints a lot outside. Uh, I work maybe more on still life, so I'm at home. So we have a very comfortable setup always. We don't disturb each other. And uh, each of us has, uh, uh, it's uh, his own environment to work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice that you have a little bit of privacy, but then you can, can be near each other too. Do you, um, do you share supplies? Does anybody ever sneak in and steal titanium white from the other? Yeah, me. I always <laughs> steal titanium white, paper towels. <laughs> yeah, every time we paint, go paint together, it's not very often, but when we go paint together, uh, he always forget paper towels or some paint. And when he goes paint alone, I don't know how he accomplished it when he doesn't have me <laughs> next to him, uh, giving him extra stuff. Uh -oh. That's what, that's what's um, good to have a partner. Um, yes. How did you meet? We met in the United States, actually. I was wow. uh, in the States. And Anastasia came uh, to do some plein airs. And uh, we met uh, during uh, those plein airs. Oh, how wonderful. Um, did you ever, Anastasia, did you th ever think that you were going to marry another artist? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> it was not my plan <laughs> to marry another artist, but just life is uh, unpredictable and it is a miracle. And uh, I went to United States to do some festivals because it's a uh, very famous events. And uh, I could never imagine that it will change this. My first trip to United States will change my life like completely. <laughs> <laughs> how wonderful. Um, and how long have you been married? Five years now. Wow, long time. And you have two little ones. Yes. Yes. Four year old and two year old. You want to tell us a little bit about what they think or they do when you're painting? Uh, they always want to participate, of course. I mean, <laughs> and uh, it is, it is uh, with, with pleasure, we're, we are happy to share, but it's impossible to do at the same time because uh, it's impossible to concentrate on your work when uh, kids are running around all in paint uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah but uh, when you really work with them and they see you working also it is sometimes it's even very funny they're small but they copy us when we're working so they would put their canvas and paint whatever and then put it far away look from far away, like if it is good enough or not. Like, <laughs> so it, is, it is very, very cute and uh, uh, they really love it. Oh, they're going to grow up to be little artists and then they're going to grow up to be big artists. Now, did, now you're Russian and, and French. Do you both speak Russian and French? Or oh, she speaks much better French than I speak Russian. Okay. I get along, but... Uh, she she's much better <laughs> but just because we most of the time we spend here in france and of course because of environment uh, uh i learn faster uh, french yeah and the children are speaking both 
or just mm -hmm. French? No, they speak both, uh, on, uh, especially the older one, uh, which is speaking now at four years old. He speaks uh, very much uh, Russian and French. He understands English also, but uh, when he speaks to mommy, he speaks Russian. When he speaks to me, he speaks French. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, and I mean, you guys are painting, so you're painting in an international language. When we see your paintings, I mean, it's just like we're transported to wherever you are. They're both just the amazing things. I'm probably, and I'm probably going to launch into letting Allison ask you some questions about the show since she's been previewing all of the work. Allison, do you have questions about the work that is going to be featured in this show that you'd like to talk with him about? Um, well, when we were curating the show, every once in a while, I would see that you would both kind of paint the same subject matter. Um, do you? ever have like um, dueling demos where you, you both yes, sit actually, yes. yeah Yes, actually we, we do that sometimes when we do um, our, our workshops. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually we do a demo a demonstration together and uh, people find it interesting because you see two different ways to approach the same subject. Yeah. Yes. But uh, in those cases for those works, it, it just it just happened. Uh, I set up something, she liked it. She set up something, I liked it. And uh, we both painted it. Nice. And then I know that, um, Anastasia, you do a lot of still lifes. And they are just, every, every time we see new pictures of them, um, our, our gallery assistant, Natalie Meredith, and I fight over which one we want to imagine having ourselves. <laughs> Did you start with? Uh, studio work and then transition into plein air or vice versa? Actually, I could never imagine that I could be like a still life painter. Uh, and I still don't call myself still life painter, but it happened when our first kid was born and uh, I wanted to do a compromise uh, to be a mother and to stay a painter. And uh, still life was this compromise for me. So when the kid was sleeping, for example, like a couple hours, I could take my easel and continue to paint. And uh, with, the, with years, it developed in uh, something which I think quite interesting, like direction in my work. But I do hope I'm a bit, uh, jealous sometimes i see how antonin develop his uh, landscape and i look at his work and i think oh i also want to get out <laughs> to do something <laughs> in this direction <laughs> and it happened quite often actually almost all still lives he paints recently it, uh, it was me who set up them so <laughs> i set up something for myself and then he comes and says, wow this is cool <laughs> i can also paint that <laughs> So, but your still lives are absolutely, absolutely stunning. Anton and yours are too. But with you, I think one of the things that I'd really like to learn more about is your um, passion for impasto. Uh, well, uh, really, a, uh, this, uh, the way that I paint, which is uh, a little bit thick, is uh, just a reaction on um, the situation where I am painting. Uh, so um, in a, a la prima situation, to be able to uh, have a pure color on your canvas, you usually need to put more paint. And maybe I do it very emotionally, so there is a lot of paint. Uh, it's just, uh, a natural way for me to express myself through paint. There is no, um, sometimes even I try, I tell myself, I will paint a little bit thinner just to get on. <laughs> um, that never happens. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Do you, either one of you identify with the traditional impressionism of your countries or do you feel like you've um, crossed over and blended the two or brought in another style of impressionism from like America or Germany or any other countries? 
Absolutely a crossover. I remember when I uh, started to study, I did not like the French Impressionist at all. I thought it was boring. I was more attracted by uh, the German Expressionism uh, or Lovis Corinth, which is kind of like a, a German uh, Impressionist, but with a lot of expression. And then I discovered um, uh, the Russian Impressionism, which uh, really made such a mix between the Expressionism of uh, the Germans and the French Impressionism. And I find it very fascinating. But with time, I developed a taste for the French Impressionist, and I think it's great. And uh, yeah, I would say me, it's a mix of those, those three things, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can say, of course, uh, the school I, uh, uh, where I started, uh, it's a completely realistic school. And, uh, but when I moved here, I think uh, because I had a great opportunity to go to museums and to see directly more Impressionist paintings and post-Impressionist paintings, and then we came to the village, which is, it's just unbelievable. It just almost did not change since then, since the time of Monet and Sisley. There is some parts, it's almost like here, here they were painting. And uh, that's uh, really made me um, understand them better, understand what was the purpose of their work and uh, discover more advantages of uh, the work of Impressionist and uh, use them in my work. Uh, and, uh, but I can say I saw it, uh, many painters, uh, when they went to study, for example, or to live in different countries, and you can see uh, that, oh, okay, here you can see the influence of Italian art, here you can see the influence of German art. Uh, and I think we just uh, go through the normal process of developing of an artist. So the first I was in very much grew up with this Russian art. And now uh, for sure I have this influence of uh, French artists. When you're out in nature, each of you, is there a spirituality that comes out or an intuition, mm -hmm. how do you choose your spot and how does it feel once you know you found your spot? It's different with uh, like light in the morning, evening, afternoon. And uh, when usually we used to first go around, sometimes just to work with kids and look around and to find the spot at a certain time of the day which we love. And then uh, when, uh, for example, I come to the spot and just it touched me, you know, just, I can say that working from the spot, it's more about feelings. So you see the light, you see the environment and it is just, it just touch. If it doesn't touch, there is no sense to paint it because nothing will, will come. Um, but because, uh, for example, uh, like we both do that. And I like when I like the motif, uh, the composition, I might uh, bring the sketch later into the studio and paint a big canvas from it. Uh, and this is more the work of, uh, uh, of the head. You know, it's more about thinking or uh, you think about what is good for my composition or what is uh, good, uh, how to place it and everything. So you are, you are not depend much of the scene. Uh, but it is important to have a sketch which is done on a spot uh, because uh, nothing can capture the colors, the feelings like the sketch. I mean, picture doesn't do that. Uh, like camera cannot capture it. Uh, that's why uh, about spir spiritual uh, moment, uh, it is, it's good even, I think, when you try not to think at all, you just look and feel and work. 
when you're outside. Do you ever use photos for your reference? Uh, me, uh, very rarely, to be honest. And I try to rely more on my sketches or on my uh, knowledge of uh, plein air painting because I might use photos, but I always keep this in mind. Uh, I usually say that when I teach a workshop that uh, it always happened, it happened to all of us. You're in front of a sunset or a beautiful scene, you take a picture of it, and it's always a bit disappointing yeah. because it miss this, maybe this spiritual moment, this, this emotion, uh, which is tied to the scene itself. It's not just about the value. It's not just about the color. There is something about being there at the moment also. And uh, that's why I think it's really important to, to paint on the spot. Or if you paint from pictures, which I do sometimes in a studio, it's rare, but I do it. I will use uh, some, um, some studies reference which will be similar to the scene I'm, uh, I'm um, trying to paint from the photo. Yeah. yeah, lovely. So you talked about teaching. So both of you are teaching sometimes throughout mm -hmm. the year or studio classes? Uh, we do only uh, one, uh, one workshop a year in, uh, in our village in Burgundy. And is it taught together by, each, by both of you? Yes, yes, that's how we do it together. Yes. <laughs> so, how many students normally join you, and what do they say when they've left the workshop? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to put words in their mouth. <laughs> but uh, but usually, it's uh, we have between ten to fifteen students. Uh, afterward, it's impossible to have uh, more uh, people in our village. Um, but usually they, they, they like it. They like the painting uh, time and they like also the French side uh, of the workshop. Yeah. When you're doing the workshops, what do you think is the thing that you can tell students that's most unique or different mm -hmm. than what they might get somewhere else? I can say that uh the thing we try to teach, uh, it is um, not new, but I think it's quite uh, rare. It's from my own experience because I had um, many teachers during uh, six years uh, of the academy. And uh, what we uh, try to accomplish, we uh, want, because we teach uh, realistic painting, yeah, painting from the spot. And uh, we try to give our students skills uh, and uh, without um, uh, pushing it in a certain manner. So they save their own manner, which I think is precious because it is their own language, their personality of our students. So they, they save it but uh, they get better getting uh, better vision and uh, better skills. And uh, what uh, I think uh, the most important that they're all different. I think this is very important. When we do, usually after the workshop, we do a little show in our gallery in the village and uh, you can see uh, the certain style and direction of each student. This is very nice. I'm sure it's life changing for them to come study with you. Was there one artist that you studied with that changed your vision or influenced you the most of all of them? I can say what uh, changed my vision was to paint with uh, some Russian painters, including Nastya, in Russia, in a small village in Russia for some time. It was, I think, two months or three months we were painting there. It's very far away from civilization. And this um, friendship and all painting together, it was not really one in particular, but it was like on this relation to nature, 
on this relation to time, a different time, which was more fitted for painting than the time we feel maybe in the day-to-day -day life. And uh, this was very changing for me. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about maybe the painting that you like best that's going to be in the show that we've got coming up? Or your fa do you have a favorite of what we're going to be showing people? So for me, it's easy. <laughs> uh, I have a painting, it's uh, Nastya with her first boy on her lap mm -hmm. while she's drinking coffee. On, uh, <laughs> obviously, this is something which is dear to my heart. Yeah. There's a wonderful painting of your son eating, um, I guess, pudding from a yes. little cup. Yes. <laughs> and his innocence is so perfect in that painting. It's just, it's joyful. It's such a, a simple moment in your lives, but it was captured so joyfully and so grandly that I like, I like seeing moments like that when an artist can capture something that we see every day and just kind of, I don't want to say take for granted, but it's a quiet moment that can easily pass, but you captured it beautifully on canvas. Thank you. I uh, went to the academy for six years. Uh, I studied uh, this uh, super classic way of uh, studying uh, realistic art with a perspective, plastic anatomy, uh, drawing every day, model, cast, uh, and like step by step, uh, six years. Um, so I passed all the steps and uh, I actually, I never uh, had another job but being an artist. I started painting when I was 13. Uh, well, I, I painted before, but I, I started the Beaux-Arts in Auxerre when I was 13. And then uh, I continued. Uh, then my parents wanted me to do, uh, to try to go to business. <laughs> 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 so I did uh, two months <laughs> and went back to, uh, went back to Beaux-Arts on this time in Paris. And uh, I did three years there. And then um, I, uh, I had an opportunity to move to, to America. So I moved to America and started to, to discover that over there, there were a lot of uh, realistic painters too. So I studied with uh, some people there, mostly uh, an artist, which is not very known, but very talented, Steve Calloway. And then uh, I had the opportunity uh, with Nastya to go to Russia and, uh, and to go to the academy, which I did uh, a bit, uh, yeah. But I had many jobs. I, was, I did wood floors, I did moving furniture, I did, <laughs> I, I did it all. <laughs> You guys are amazing. You fascinate us and you inspire us. And thank you for sharing your works with us and with our collectors. They've, um, they're, they're much loved in the U.S. So thank you for thank making you. them. Thank you.